Well, good morning, Lion Hearts. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion coming to you live from Hollywood, Cal Wait, we're not in Hollywood, California. We're in Gotland, Visby, Sweden. Sounds weird to say. Tomorrow's my birthday, and it dawned on me this will be the first birthday I've ever spent out of the country. So weird. I don't know. It just seems weird. I'm super excited to be here. Jet lag got me, so I was up early. I'm out. I'm gonna go make some coffee. Just enjoy the morning. And uh, we're gonna hit, I know as crazy as this sounds, you're like, you went all the way to Sweden to hit a flea market? Yes, we're gonna hit a flea market today. Michael and Christina are kind of like decorating the whole reception area with kind of odds and ends that they've been finding. They just wanted it to be different and unique. And so they wanted to help support the local economy and so they want to go buy a few things over at the flea market and I was like, I definitely want to go because you probably noticed from the video yesterday a lot of the history here goes way back and I'm talking hop in your way back machine and go way back, way, way back <laughs> because we're talking 1600, 1700, 1800s and since it's so commonplace for everything out here to be that old who knows what you'll find at a flea market, you might find some really interesting gems so I'll be helping them pick out things. I might even get something for me. And then after that, they have to go to a wedding. So they have got me a car and they are turning me loose. And watch out because I'm gonna film a lot of stuff today. You're not gonna see it all today. But just in the drive from the airport to here, I was seeing stuff like every quarter of a mile. I was like, oh, if, if, if this were me, I'd be pulling the car over right now and filming this. And he's like, you'll have plenty of time to do that. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna start driving and anything that looks interesting to me, I'm gonna start filming. Which like, it was funny because I would see all these little clown signs off the side of the road and I go, Michael, what are all these clown signs doing? And he said, it's ice cream. Swedes love their ice cream and they put those all over the side of the road to let kids know that there's ice cream there so they can hound their parents to take them to get ice cream. So things like that, I was like, oh, I gotta hop out and film that. And he goes, that's gonna be really interesting to see my country through your eyes because it's, you know, it's so second nature to him, everything. Like, nothing really is that astounding to him, but everything that I have seen is astounding to me. So I'm gonna meet up with um, Michael's old girlfriend and a really great friend. He's known her for years. Um, she works here, not here at his house, but she works in town. And um, she asked me to come meet up with her. So I'm gonna go meet up with her today and hang out and uh, just film as much as I can. I brought my, um, my guide to Visby, I bought this like book about that thick and Michael was looking through it and right on the cover he goes, I think that image that's on the cover is part of the church we're getting married in. And I was like, wow. <laughs> so then as he just thumbed through books, he's like, oh yeah, we passed this church today, we passed this thing today. So you'll get to see all that stuff. So Days with Jordan the Lion, live from Visby, Sweden, begins now. And here is where I will be enjoying my coffee from Michael's 1600s farmhouse. That's a great saying. Kind of reminds me of Shawshank Redemption. Get busy living or get busy dying. And Michael's dad, who I have yet to meet because he was feeling under the weather yesterday and decided to stay at his girlfriend's house so he wouldn't get any of us sick, happens to be an avid bird watcher. So I noticed this stuff around here. Well, it's breakfast time and Michael gave me like the Swedish equivalent of a cinnamon roll. Got some coffee and uh, an unshowered Michael. Yeah. All right, so um, we have the Swedish sport or Gotland sport specific to the island called Barpa. You have this kind of disc, has inventions for your fingers. People who throw this have this like custom made through the hand. One of this is, yeah, this is one that will fit me somewhat. What it is is you make two, you put two sticks, I think about 30 yards in between. You stand by one stick. We don't have sticks here right now. You kind of put your, your foot across it. I think it's actually like this. Take one step forward and then you're supposed to try and get it on one, like in between the sticks? Yep, you have to put it on the sticks. So people are really good at it. They can, um, they can uh, like nail uh, a stick from like 30 yards and you just kind of break it in half. To... So basically in the American version it would be a mixture of horseshoes, um, basically horseshoes, yeah. cornhole, and yeah probably the mixture of those two. Yeah. Horseshoes and cornhole. And shot putting with a big disc. <laughs> Why do I feel like mine's not going to do that? Ah, 
Ah. Nope. Tumbling. We should look for those at the flea market too. Yeah. A little bit more. Yep. Yeah, that was more uh, like spinny. Yep. Well, we're going to head off to the flea market now, but I oh, looked up in the sky and I just said, oh my God, I have to film that sky. Look at that. I know it may not be a big deal to most people, but when you live in Los Angeles and you don't ever get to see blue skies, it's a big deal. Well, Michael and Christina were nice enough to get everybody maps of Godland and Visby, so this is going to be kind of my tour guide later today. Oh, this is the one I wanted to come take pictures in front of. Wow. Yeah, I Look at it, that. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing I've noticed already in the time that I've been in Visby, just at Michael's house, because Michael has some nephews, um, so his dad has like these circus books, and I was going like, what's up with the circus books? And then we parked so they can go buy a card for the wedding, and I looked and I saw this and I go, oh my god, I have to film this. This is a local park with a circus theme. You guys know I love my architecture, so you're going to be seeing a lot of it. Check that out. I'm supposed to meet Michael and Christine over here, and Michael said, even though they're doing some work on this house, he said this is one of the more historic houses in this little village. He said most of what's over in this part of Visby, their villages, not towns or anything like that. They're, look at that, how cool is that? We passed by one of those Roman mile markers and I said, oh Michael, I gotta get that footage. He's like, you'll see a ton of those. He goes, I see so many of them, I don't even remember they're there anymore. One of the other interesting things that he said was that in Visby, like, they're, the only cemeteries are on church property. Like, every time you go by a church, you'll see a cemetery there. We're in the flower shop so they can buy a card and I just love this Swedish memorabilia here. And here's the front of what I already showed you the back side of. This is what they're fixing up and renovating. You can tell by looking just at the, uh, the clock part, how kind of diminished it is. Kind of looks like heaven, doesn't it? You can see the sun directly behind that one cloud, just lighting up the whole outline of it all. Beautiful. Well, this is the local bibliotheque, which is obviously, if you've studied any foreign languages, you pretty much know it's a library. But I saw these rams here, or lambs, or rams, whatever, and Michael said, oh yeah, yeah, that's like everything in Sweden is lambs, but what I actually wanted to stop over and look at was this. I thought that was pretty interesting. Little directional windmill kind of things. I was hoping we'd get a little bit of a gust of wind so you could see their arms go by, but you know what it actually looks like to me now? I'm starting to laugh about it because it reminds me of uh, Terminator 2 when his hands turn into those liquid metal blades and he's clamping onto the back of the car. Oh, there we go. There we, now we got some action. In yesterday's video, you might remember I mentioned the ice cream clowns that you see off the side of the road. This is the exact joker I was talking about. You see these all over the country roads. And then one of the other interesting things that Michael was telling me is he said, you'll notice when you're out driving around these like country roads, he said, you'll see at the foot of the driveway, there'll be like a little like mailbox or a little box with money in it. And he said, what that is is farmers, everything is like honor system here. So the farmers grow crops and they may sell strawberries or tomatoes or something off the side of the road. They won't be out there working. You just take what you want and then you put the money in that box and you leave. Utopian society, my friends. Yes. More windmills, <laughs> more windmills. I can never get enough of the windmills. The fields here are kind of good for one thing is they're very flat and, and during the Second World War, um, the kind of the Allies pilots had that as one of their backup plans. Should they've you know had engine troubles or got shot a little bit uh, uh, going over the bombing raids over Germany, they would make a turn up towards Sweden and Gotland. This is an island in the Baltic Sea, and they, they knew if they kind of crash landed here that they would be safe because Sweden during that time was uh, uh, was they were neutral, uh, neutral, neutral yeah. yeah, neutral in that. And so they you know they, so you would see like planes coming down here and, and crash landing and the farmers coming up there to help them and. And still today, you can find find sometimes in the 
you know, the materials that were in the in the planes, like the aluminum or metal or whatever. Just laying get, in the fields? No, not laying in the fields, but they, the, the farmers repurpose them. So you can find sometimes, so like, oh, I built a garage. You can see like the beam in the garage is like the center beam uh, of oh, like a bomber cool. or something, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it was kind of a cool thing. And then th this is also a place where uh, a lot of um, war, uh, prisoners of war of the Germans were stationed here to kind of, you know, wait out the war. And, and they were kind of bored, so they kind of built this like soccer fields and kind of, you know, place of, 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 of athleticism and stuff like that. Still, and they're still, still uh, there today, then people still kind of enjoying and built it and kind of, you know, it's just a past time. So they, so they were kind of, they were just kind of hanging around on that. So we're going to see a lot of churches while we're here in Sweden. And Michael was saying that there's 92 churches and actually the purpose of them was to help convert the Vikings when they came here and settled. And there's one of them. Oh, there's the cars. Well, this is one of the more unique ideas I've ever seen. This Mini Cooper is actually decorated with family photos. All right, friends, well, my very first Swedish flea market. Let's rock, let's do some damage. I'm noticing already, just in the short amount of time we've been here, that it's a lot of furniture. If I were buying furniture here from my apartment, this is the kind of stuff I think I would buy. The weirder, the gaudier, the tackier, the better. We got here about a half an hour after it opened and it was already packed, and I honestly haven't seen one person leave with empty hands. This reminds me of Indian in the Cupboard. If you ever read the book Indian in the Cupboard, I can just envision the cowboy, the Indian. I had to make one of those actually when I was in elementary school. Now this is the kind of stuff I come looking for when I go to a flea market. I love that kind of stuff. Nice glasses. Or this guy. Kind of reminds me of the puppets on uh, Mr. Rogers. Even a boat? and like a Winnebago for sale. Oh, check out this old organ. I love stuff like that. And then Michael was showing me these were for uh, straightening and cleaning up the linens. And they definitely love their Santa Claus here because I've seen tons and tons of Christmas stores since we've been here. Check out the detail on this one. I actually kind of like that. I did leave enough room in my suitcase to bring stuff home if I want. I see some phantom in. Oh, check that out. Now we know what Garfield's real name is. It's in 1991. What's that? Oh, Kelly C. Rose. Classic. Yeah, so this is a common uh, insurance book in Sweden to promote uh, communism and socialism of, uh, you know, him being the the proletarian the worker who is the hero of everything and his friends. And what you don't see pictured here is the bourgeoisie, who is the, kind of, you know, the man who owns the means of production, who is the evil owner and businessman. And, and that's the character of the protagonist. I really like this little wooden box thing I found. Check this out. It actually holds matchsticks. And like I said yesterday, I'm guessing that's Archie or something similar and we know those two. 1980 Tarzan. Reminds me of that vlog I did a couple of weeks ago at Grace Burroughs. So we just made a few purchases and Michael got one that is uh, a book on how to write Swedish songs. And as we're walking around I'm going Dude, I don't see prices on any of this stuff. And he said, no, you just grab what you want and you go over and you tell them what you're willing to pay. And while we were over there, I saw like three people make transactions and she didn't barter with them all. Whatever they said they wanted to pay, she just took it. So Michael said this is where, this is like a factory on the premises that they make like fabric and textiles and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, out of wool from the local sheep, which totally makes sense. Cause I told you guys earlier, that was, that was the deal here. Everything is lamb, rams, sheeps. Yeah, this is all the unspun wool. And you can see the different colors. Christina was just pointing it out to me. That's the dark. And this is kind of the finished product with all that, that wool that we just saw over on the other side. You can actually buy it here. So Michael was saying that the, uh, 
lambs that we saw over at Carolyn Lagerfeld's yesterday, this is, as he says, the end game for them. They're actually raised for this, and then they eat the meat as well, but wow. Different culture. That's kind of what I imagined myself to look like if I were a Viking. Michael just told me to uh, pick out anything I want and he'll get it for me. Just uh, as my first time here and everything, so I'm really looking around. There's all kinds of cool stuff, but a lot of it I just don't know what it is, so I'm having to ask everything. Wonder why there's a Friday the 13th mask on this box. The prices here are ridiculously low. Michael actually overpaid. He went up, we had, all three of us had glass items in our hands. We had two or three, four <coughs> each go up to pay and they say 50 crowns and he actually felt bad. So he's like, how about 60? Which broke down to, we probably had 12 pieces. They were charging us about $9 for it. Michael said these are almost like a mixture of like a skateboard sled. He said when in the roads are icy and stuff, you actually stand on there and hold on to the handles and then you use, like he's doing, like one foot to make it move and then you stand on the other one. Almost like the uh, dog sleds. <laughs> I've had a little bit of trouble finding natural water because they like carbonated water here a lot and I don't really like it. But Michael said we had to have the uh, Swedish hot dogs because they're boiled, so Swedish hot dogs it is. So they found me a water that doesn't have bubbles and I guess the reason that is because they have really good well water here so everybody just drinks like basically tap water even though it's yellow from the iron I guess the water is supposed to be pretty good for you here so here's our haul for the day and Christine was just saying basically in the conversion we probably paid about 30 bucks for all this stuff and as we were buying it we were just literally walking over here and throwing it in the yard off the side and I said aren't you worried about somebody stealing and he said nope Swedes are very much rule followers so guess there's not really much of a risk of getting anything stolen. Well, we're officially done here and we're gonna take off and I'm gonna go see some more Sweden and they're going to a wedding. So Michael's dad, Vili, is returned home and this is his prize Impala. And Michael was telling me that on this island there are actually a, a lot of classic cars but he said everybody that has them doesn't really drive them because they like, they leave them in their garage and just like wash them and wax them and only bring them out for car shows. So his dad actually does drive his. And uh, there you can see the, the lamb, kind of what we saw in Fardham at the flea market. You can see he's got that for his seats. So I mentioned to you guys those Roman mile markers. And every time we pass one, I go, Michael, there's a mile marker. I want to see it. And he goes, they're everywhere, dude. <laughs> so he said, there's actually one kind of right down the street from us. So I'm gonna walk out and see if I can find it. So as we were out driving around, I kept noticing that there were like big piles of rocks, like big, like a mound. And I said, what's the deal with all the rocks? And Michael said, well, that's um, the farmers plow all those rocks out of the way so they can farm. But he said the pretty interesting thing about that is that um, he said that's how a lot of the buried Viking treasure was found. He said that the farmers would be out looking and removing those rocks and then they would like just stumble on what they thought was a big rock and then they would it would turn out to be a big viking treasure but he said that created a little bit of a problem because what happens then or what used to be swedish law was that when you discovered something like that you let the swedish government know he said they basically came took over your land for 10 years to ex excavate it they gave you nothing in return and you were not allowed to farm on your own land. So he said what ended up happening was that the people that owned the land, when they would find those treasure chests or whatever it was, this buried treasure, they wouldn't report it. They would just basically keep it, put it in their barn somewhere until Sweden got wise and said, you know what, it might be better for us to work together. And they started making some sort of deal with them. And I'm actually gonna, once I get the car, they're dropping the car off here pretty soon. Once I get that, I'm gonna take you out and show you something that as we passed, Michael told me the story and he said, it's not really worth going out and seeing. And then he tells me the story and I said, that is absolutely worth going out and seeing. So we're gonna go do that. And then we're gonna go visit Lena. And I'm just loving this blank, empty space and empty sky and just no traffic, no nothing. It's a nice change of pace. Now, one of the other things that they told me was that Michael said there is no real property ownership out here. 
So no property ownership, what that really means is he said you can go on anybody's property and hunt, um, pick mushrooms, pick berries. You can even, they have a law here where you are allowed to show up on anybody's property and set up camp and camp there for one night without any problems. And so uh, I couldn't believe that. He said, yeah, the only caveat to that is he said, if it's land that's being farmed, it's just kind of socially acceptable that you do not walk on there and ruin their crops. But other than that, you're allowed to cross in anybody's property that you want. And the reason I tell you that is because what that means to someone like me as a vlogger, that means there's no trespassing. And I don't know if the mile marker is out here, but if there's no trespassing, then I guess it wouldn't hurt for me to walk out here and look at this little building and see what I find out here. Oh, it looks like an old abandoned stable of some sort. I took that path out there and didn't really see much, so I just turned around and came back to our journey at hand of finding the mile marker. And now I'm actually walking in the middle of the street, but you may notice the street is not all that wide. And <laughs> while we were out driving, what you'll notice is that everybody has just adapted to this. And sometimes there's little turnoffs, but for the most part, everybody just puts one wheel into the grass and both cars can fit pretty crazy. Check this out, we got a motorcyclist right here by the mile marker. Well, here it is. This is what I was telling you guys about. I know it's nothing really spectacular, but since we don't have them where I live, I, it's spectacular to me. Now, what I was told is that the actual mile marker on top, the actual like tower looking part right here, this is the original. This is when the Romans contained or took care of like all the roads out here and everything. This was their actual mile marker. You can see, it says five over four mile. And then as Visby became its own, basically the government took more control over the island itself. They put these little house things underneath it, this little white part. And then they kept the originals and put those on top, which I thought was great. And since we don't have those, I had to show it to you. I mean, I know it's like, he was laughing every time I'd see one and I'd make a big deal about it, but it's pretty cool. Now, one thing that absolutely must be pointed out about Sweden, probably the cleanest place I've ever been. Absolutely clean, like no trash anywhere, no nothing. Do you guys see that little hut house over there? I had to look at this. Actually, I was walking back and Michael's neighbor, Carolyn, was driving by and said, do you wanna to go to the store with me? So she picked me up and then as we're driving, we see this little hut and Michael had pointed one out earlier, said they're kind of all over out here. I love that. This is the national, famous for their poppies. The famous Gotland poppies, look at that. Uh, that's a real poppy field. So we were driving by this church and I saw this out here. So I'm guessing they're probably having a wedding here today and this is probably the wedding car they're gonna drive off in. But I wanted to show you this church since we were here because it's kind of like I was telling you, there's a cemetery pretty much at every church and it's for the members of the people that went to the church. And here's part of the cemetery you can see. But this is really what I wanted to show you. Look at that church. Like I said, I, I'm pretty sure that they're having a wedding because of how many cars there are. But Michael said the churches are open 24 seven and anybody can come, they're never locked. So probably what I'll do is I'll come back and try and go inside when there's nobody here. Because just look at the, like, look at that. You see this grave? They keep it very beautiful here. And I can actually see some birds right up in there in kind of the Quasimodo outlook. So that museum right there that you see on the sign, that's actually a tractor museum. We're in the Swedish grocery store right now. I'm sure as you can tell. And this is like their ketchup. It's basically called American dressing. And Michael said like, they don't really do ketchup here that much, but they put this on everything. 
So oddly enough, I found out recently that Michael, like peanut butter is not a big thing in Sweden. They rarely have it, but Michael was recently introduced to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So since we're in here, I found this and I'm going to surprise him with bringing him the, uh, the fixins for peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Don't let your baby smoke is what I'm taking that as. Okay, this says uh, smoking is going to like everybody. I love it. Okay. And smoking is going to ruin your sperm count. Smoking is going to give you a heart attack. Smoking hurts your lungs. That's why she's coughing up blood. It's it's ruining your your blood vessels. Look at these scary pictures. Your blood vessels. Yikes. I know I said I was gonna take us to see something really fascinating and historical, but when I told Michael what I was gonna do, he said, you know what, I'm actually gonna take you to something else that's gonna tie into that in the next couple of days, so maybe we should just put those all together. So that's what's gonna happen. I, instead of me doing part of it today and then telling you more of it in a couple of days, it just makes more sense to do it all in one day. So I'm gonna head off to basically the harbor where Lena's working and visit Lena. So here we go guys. And here's my whip for the day. Actually, I think this is my whip for the whole, that's what us hip people call cars. I think that's, uh, I think that's what I'm gonna be driving the whole time I'm here. Well, we made it. Don't mind me, I'm just following the chicken. Nice. Well, I just said hi to Lena, and I'm now like walking around where she works, taking a look. This place is beautiful. It's um, it's a restaurant, and they're kind of in between lunch and dinner right now. So I started looking around. And the guy said, "Feel free." I said, "Do you mind if I vlog it?" He said, "Absolutely, go for it." Beautiful. And there she is, working hard. While she's on the phone, I'm gonna take you guys outside and show you what it looks like outside. This is awesome. A hammock, a little pond. I think this is kind of like a little resort area. So actually what this is, is it's kind of like a little hotel. And she's like the receptionist here during the day and they have this beautiful restaurant. So I wasn't quite exactly sure what I was walking into, uh, but she told me to go walk around because she said there's some chickens and all kinds of things to see out here. Now I don't exactly understand why there are bed frames out here that they've done nothing with, but it's fascinating. My new favorite word. So obviously this has a historical significance. This property, look at that. That's where we were inside walking around. I would definitely say if you're coming to Visby, this might be the place to stay. <laughs> if you can't stay with Michael. And right here's the garden where they grow a lot of the food that they use for cooking inside. Somebody translate this and tell me what it says. Oh, there's a turkey! Look at that turkey! Look at all the detail just around the windows. So Lena just had me try some of this Swedish candy and it was weird because I was sucking on it for a while and it tastes like a mint and then when I got to the center it was like chocolate. What the heck? So this is Lena and Lena works here in the summer but she actually lives in Stockholm and since I'm going to be in Stockholm for a day she's going to help me figure out some stuff to do there. So this is the lovely Lena. Shy. Driving by and I saw this kind of piece of Americana rotating up here and I just had to stop and take a look at that. Awesome. Sweden, you're doing it right. All the way down to the guitar strings. Man, that is beautiful. Look at that. Well, friends, the nighttime is upon us, but my night's not over. I came back and took a two hour nap and I'm actually gonna go back out and I'm gonna go to a place called Captain Grog and meet Lena and her boyfriend, I guess, Tonight is disco night, which I don't really care about, but she said it's a fun place and it's pretty much right by the pier. So I'm gonna go and hang out there now. I don't think Lena's instructions could have been any clearer. She said, if you get to the silo, you went too far. There's a silo, there's the water, a couple of boats, 
and then Captain Grog is right over here. Here we are, Captain Grog. I was starving and they just closed the kitchen so I missed it. Dang. Lena was able to get me some fries, God bless her. We're just hanging out. Look at the decor up here. We're hanging out with the ladies. Ah, ha, ha, they're trying to hide. Well, Lionhearts, it is 1.30 a.m. I just got home and now I'm going to edit the vlog that you're watching right now. I hope you guys enjoyed today. There was a lot of stuff that we did today that I didn't even put in the vlog because it was just going to make it too long, so you'll see it in the future. I want to thank Ginger Bowen for sending a really nice donation for my birthday today, and now, technically, I am 36 years old. <sighs> Weird. I don't feel it. But yeah, happy birthday to me. Shh. Don't tell anybody. I don't want a big deal, but I'm 36. Weird. I never thought I would see that age, honestly. I don't know why. I always thought I would be, like, gone before now, but I guess I'm glad I'm not. So come back and see me tomorrow. I promise you a very enjoyable Sweden vlog because I know what we're doing tomorrow and it's going to be worth your time. We're going inside the walls of Visby, so this is actually, like, one of the things that I've been looking forward to the most, so... Have a great night. I love you all. I hope you enjoy what you're seeing here from Gotland, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Goodbye.